Can you imagine what life would be like without a cell phone? They make things so much easier and a lot more efficient. The problem is the signal has to get where it's going without wires. That's why you see so many telecommunications antennas everywhere. And believe me, there are more coming, lots more. Workers do a ton of work on building rooftops, sides of buildings, and mobile news trucks, popular places for telecommunications antennas. So, are you safe working near these antennas? You may be, but there is a potential hazard you need to be aware of. We refer to it as RF, which stands for radio frequency radiation. RF is the energy used to provide cell phone and other telecommunications services, such as satellite communications, television broadcasting, and portable radio communications, without wire. It's not harmful if you're far enough away from it, but if you're close enough to it for a long enough period of time, you could have a problem. You know how when you cook something in the microwave, the energy penetrates into the food, making it hotter and hotter the longer it's exposed? That's what could happen to human tissue if it's overexposed to RF radiation for a long enough period of time. Quite a bit is known about the thermal effects of RF radiation on humans, but keep in mind that RF is non-ionizing radiation. It is not known to have any long-term cumulative health effects, like X-ray machines or nuclear power generation. Still, we're going to err on the side of caution while performing our work near RF antennas. Today, we're going to introduce you to potential RF exposures for construction workers and give you some safe work practices to help you protect yourself from overexposure. There are different types and shapes of RF emitting antennas. Some, like these rectangular shaped antennas, emit RF in a single direction. Others, like these cylindrical rod-shaped antennas, emit RF in more than one direction. Keep a sharp lookout. There are also antennas disguised to blend into the building scape, sometimes referred to as stealth antennas. At first glance, you may not even see them. These antennas are made to look like or be a part of flagpoles, trees, plants, clock towers, steeples, crosses on churches, actual building structures, you name it. You also have to be aware of antennas on nearby buildings, especially if there are several antennas in a cluster on an adjacent building. Just because the roof you're working on doesn't have antennas doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the woods. It depends on how far away you're working and what direction the RF is being emitted. No matter how many antennas are present, or what types of antennas we're talking about, it's difficult to determine exactly how much RF is being emitted at any one time unless you have an electromagnetic field monitor to measure it. That's because there's no other way for you to know the power and frequency of each antenna in the area at the exact time you're working. Frequency matters when it comes to health effects on humans. Frequencies between 30 and 300 megahertz appear to be the most harmful because that's the range where humans absorb RF most efficiently when they're in an RF field, but still some distance away from the antennas. Cellular antennas typically operate between 300 and 3000 megahertz, with most operating in a range between 850 and 1900 megahertz, and at less than 100 watts of power. That's good news for us when the only antennas around are cellular antennas. Assuming that all antennas are active, which is always a good assumption to make, the greater the number of antennas, the greater amount of RF being emitted. That's why you need to be even more cautious around clusters of antennas. One way to protect yourself is to stay out of the RF field altogether. That's the area through which the RF is being emitted. That may be easy to do with some types of antennas if you know their emission patterns. Cellular phone antennas are rectangular in shape with vertical panels. They send the RF straight out from the antenna. So if they're facing away from your work area, you won't have any significant RF exposure. Transmitting antennas that are parabolic or dish-shaped, like satellite antennas, 
emit RF in one general direction. It travels out in a cylindrical shape about the size of the circumference of the dish, sort of like a spotlight beam. Again, if the antennas aren't facing your work area, you can proceed with the work without fear of overexposure. And some dish-shaped antennas are nothing more than receivers, like satellite dish receivers for television. If they're not transmitting, they're not emitting RF, so you can work next to them safely. It's not as easy to avoid the RF field with other types of antennas, like those that are a cylindrical rod shape. They emit RF all the way around, 360 degrees. It's tough to avoid the RF field completely. You may also find a microwave antenna on a rooftop where you'll be working. They're usually large drum-shaped antennas that emit RF in a single direction out from the face of the antenna. The RF emitted from microwave antennas is much more potent than RF from cellular, satellite, and cylindrical rod antennas. So if you run across one, be sure to stay out of that RF field altogether. So, when in doubt, distance is your best ally. RF dissipates considerably, losing its potency the farther it travels away from the antenna. So, the farther away you are from any RF source, the less your risk of overexposure. When working around RF, time is another ally. If you walk quickly through a field of RF, you'll be exposed to a lot less radiation than if you stop for a period of time in that same field. It's just like cooking food in that microwave oven. The longer it's exposed to the RF, the hotter it gets. So, how do you protect yourself from overexposure to RF while performing work near antennas in the area? Start by identifying the site manager and asking whether there are any working telecommunications antennas on the roof or the area where the work will be performed. And if so, get a copy of the building's current RF radiation survey. The surveys are required by the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, for registered antennas and will inform you whether the typical RF levels in your work area are less than 100 percent of the maximum permissible exposure level. If so, you can proceed with your work without concern for overexposure. If the RF levels in your work area are at or above the maximum permissible exposure level, you'll need to use some safe work practices to protect yourself from overexposure. See if you can get the antennas powered down temporarily. If you can, you're good to go. If not, you'll need shielding and an electromagnetic field monitor, or EMF monitor, for protection. There is special clothing made of Nomex designed to reflect RF. If worn correctly, it will help protect you from RF up to a thousand percent of the maximum permissible exposure level. In addition to your RF protective clothing, you'll also need an EMF monitor. There are different types of monitors, but the one you'll need is portable and attaches to the outside of your clothing. The monitors are calibrated and preset to an established exposure level. If the RF exceeds the established exposure level, the alarm warning, which could be audible, visual, or vibration, lets you know to bail out of there in a hurry. There are some limitations to the protective clothing. For example, in rare situations, like at some U.S. military facilities, RF can rise above the levels where protective RF clothing can keep you safe. In these situations, your company will have to negotiate to have the antennas temporarily powered down before you start the work. Also, the RF protective clothing will not protect you from electrical shock or arc flash. In fact, the fabric is highly conductive. So anytime the work is too close to one or more working RF antennas, and it requires exposure to energized electrical conductors or circuit parts at the same time, your company will have to negotiate to have the antennas powered down so you can wear your arc flash and electrical shock PPE without concern for RF exposure. Even though RF surveys are required by the FCC, the reality is they won't always be available. So what happens when there's no site manager or no RF survey has been completed? Well, in that case, make a quick but careful 
street task safety assessment of the roof and any potential RF exposure issues. If you can make the assessment from a safe distance while keeping out of RF fields, you won't need to wear RF protective clothing. However, if you're not sure about your potential exposure, be sure to wear the protective clothing. Look for RF warning signs and labels on the roof. Signs and labels should show an electromagnetic radiation warning symbol or somehow indicate that the area is restricted. But be cautious, because even though warning signs are required, they won't always be there. Look for telecommunications antennas, including any disguised antennas. Determine what types of antennas are present and whether they could be emitting RF in the direction of your work area. Also, determine whether the antennas are close enough to your work area to present a significant RF hazard. To adequately minimize your exposure, stay at least six feet away from a single antenna and 10 feet away from more than one antenna emitting RF in your direction. The bottom line is, if the antennas are far enough away from your work area, or if they're emitting the RF in a single direction away from it, there's no problem. Just carefully choose your access route to and from the work area to avoid or limit your exposure. There are three other key considerations you should know about. The first is that active RF antennas are extremely hot. If you were to touch one, you would experience some pretty severe burns. But that should never be a problem if you're following these safe work practices because you'll never be that close to an active antenna. The second consideration has to do with pacemakers. In some cases, RF may affect the function of pacemakers. If you have a pacemaker, be sure to check with your doctor before performing work near any RF field. The third is that some rooftop penthouses have HVAC equipment inside of them. In some cases, RF antenna wires run inside the penthouse. In these situations, there could be RF exposure issues, so protect yourself accordingly. Since RF is such a fickle energy to measure accurately, we've built some safety factors into these safe work practices. Most of the time you're working, you can protect yourself from overexposure to RF. Just remember to identify any antennas in the area before you start work Always assume that all antennas are active. If possible, determine what direction the RF is being emitted and stay out of the RF field as much as possible. If you have to walk through or work in an RF field, limit the amount of time you spend there. Pre-plan your work tasks and travel routes so you can get in and out as quickly as possible. Never stop close to antennas while in the RF field without protective shielding and an electromagnetic field monitor. Maintain a safe work distance from all telecommunications antennas. When antennas are closer than the appropriate safe work distance and the RF is being emitted toward your work area, try to get the antennas powered down before you start work. If you can't get the antennas powered down, postpone the work and talk with your supervisor to weigh other options for performing that work safely. You may need to come back to perform the work another time when the antennas are powered down or wear RF protective clothing and an EMF monitor. So here's what it all comes down to. Cell phones make our job a lot easier in some ways and a little trickier in others. Working around cellular antennas and other telecommunications antennas can be challenging at times. Just remember, if you pay close attention and take a few simple protective measures, you can still work safely.